Hey everyone, I finally have finished the testing that I wanted to do with the M1 processor in the new Max, and got some results for you. So, but I decided to split this up into two different videos. So this first one you're watching right now is going to be kind of a summary, and then I'm going to do a separate video where I go into detail, more detail about the different tests that I ran and, and some more of the the data that I have in order to reach the conclusion that I did. So if that's something that interests you, you might want to make add this to your, your, your playlist and watch that video after after this one. So there's a lot of misinformation out, out there about the, the M1s and it's coming on both sides, pro, both pro and con. And it's hard to tell from the news media coverage how good this thing actually is. So I decided to test for myself. I purchased a Mac Mini M1 uh, a few, a couple, about two months ago, and I got the 16 gig version with 256 gig of storage. So that's a, a memory upgrade over the base unit. So this unit was $900 instead of the base 700. I tried to compare this against a fairly wide variety of machines, all, like all the computers that I have in my possession that might possibly give it a run for its money. And then I also wanted to include a couple of older machines for those of you who might be using some old hardware. And then I also compared it against a bargain computer as well. So I compared Adobe Premiere Pro and then DaVinci Resolve and also Final Cut Pro 10 where I could. Obviously, I can't run it on PCs. So here is the total rendering time of all the videos that I did. And I'll cover what those videos are in my other video uh, on this channel. But you get, you get kind of a rough approximation for the performance of the M1 compared to some of these other machines. Here is the M1 right here so of the videos that I rendered the total time for all of those was 13 hours 1 minute 54 seconds and then compared it to MacBook Pro from 2019 which took 10 hours 8 minutes 48 seconds and then for example we took a take a look at my Dell laptops the 7590 7 hours 23 the 9560 which is actually a little bit older uh, did it in 649 the Intel i5 with the 1650 graphics, did it in three hours, 46, three hours, 46 minutes, 14 seconds. Intel, same, same machine running a 1050 Ti graphics card, did that in three hours, 44 and 50 and 50 seconds. Uh, the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, the one that I wanted you to pay attention to, because it's about the same price, did it in two hours, 57 minutes, tw and 22 seconds. And then my main desktop computer that I do most of my work on did, did the renders of all the videos in two hours, 15 minutes. Uh, for point of comparison. My old MacBook Pro completed the rendering in 43 hours, 20 minutes, and 4 seconds, so definitely not very fast. The little Intel Nook mini PC completed the rendering in 30 hours, 28 minutes, 13 seconds. And then my i5 with both the 1050 Ti and 1650 did the rendering in 3 hours, 18 minutes, and 21 seconds. That's Adobe Premiere. Now let's take a look at some of the Resolve data, so Resolve rendering times. Uh, I did fewer videos on this, and I should mention that I had to r remove some aspects of the videos. On the Adobe Premiere side, though some of those timelines included, or well, many of those timelines actually included After Effects elements. So the lower thirds that I use here on my channel, uh, those are done in After Effects. And in order to do testing and resolve, I had to pre-render those and make video files out of them. So Resolve has a little bit of a, a performance advantage as compared to Premiere Pro because those elements were actually pre-rendered and didn't have to be rendered as part of the, as part of the, the full video timeline. But in terms of uh, performance, so we've got the M1 completing that total render at 1 hour 32 minutes 26 seconds. Very similar to the MacBook Pro from 2019 at 1 hour 35 minutes 52 seconds. Also very similar to my Dell 7590 laptop 1 hour 32 minutes on that one as well. The Dell 9560 took a little bit longer at 1 hour 43 minutes. Then we jumped to some desktop machines. So it's an Intel i5 8600 with a, with a 1650 at 46 minutes. The same machine on a 1050 Ti took 54 minutes. And then again, the computer I have here in my trailer that I want to use as a point of comparison took 37 minutes, 49 seconds to do complete the rendering. And my AMD Ryzen 9, my main computer, took 37, uh, 37 minutes, 11 seconds. Uh, the Intel i5 8600 with both the 1050 Ti and 1650 did it in 29 minutes, 19 seconds. Their old 2012 MacBook Pro took 12 hours, 58 minutes, 14 seconds, and my small Intel Nook did it in 3 hours, 50 minutes, and 41 seconds. So performance is kind of all over the map on that. Where things really got interesting, though, was in Adobe After Effects. So 
you can see here that these numbers are actually pretty consistent across the board. You see a lot of these took right around two hours and tw 20 minutes, to two hours, 10 minutes, two, uh, to two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, so very consistent. Surprisingly, this what the computer that I thought was going to be the slowest in this test actually was right neck and neck with most of the other ones, including the M1. So that little Intel Nook uh, from 2018, the eighth, eighth generation machine, completed the After Effects project in two hours, 21 minutes. And the M1 did it in 2 hours 20 minutes, the MacBook Pro from 2019, 2 hours 18 minutes, and then we take a look at some of these other machines, my Dell 7590 completed that render in 1 hour 34 minutes, 52 seconds, and then my older Dell 9560 took 3 hours 21 minutes, the uh, i5-8600 was 236 with the 1650, and then 219 with the 1050 Ti, uh, the Ryzen 5 3600, again, is what I want to be the main point of comparison for this video. One hour, 33 minutes, 59 seconds, and then my main desktop machine that I use all the time, one hour, four minutes, 33 seconds. Uh, the original MacBook Pro, four hours, 27 minutes on that one, so yeah, not very fast. All right, now, again, I'm gonna go into way more detail on the other video, uh, but let's take a very quick look at what I, my, this is a, a transcode job. So basically converting a video, a, a single video from one format to another with no editing or anything like that. Um, so the different bars here represent the different uh, pieces of software. The blue is Adobe Premiere Pro, orange is DaVinci Resolve, and uh, the gray is Final Cut Pro. Uh, you can see here that almost across the board, Adobe Premiere Pro was the slowest uh, in most cases, uh, but in most cases it was also neck and neck with DaVinci Resolve. Now, the, well, I was only able to use uh, Final Cut on the Apple-based machines, obviously, and its render time was faster on the MacBook Pro, but slower on the M1 and on, and on the 2019 MacBook Pro. So, yeah, generally speaking, the M1 was decent in, in this test. Uh, not necessarily amazing, though. Now, we do the same, same sort of thing, transcode into HEVC. And the numbers get very interesting here. The old MacBook Pro 2012 obviously is not able to keep up with it, all the rest of them, and it kind of throws off the sense of scale for the whole chart. But uh, the M1, 9 minutes, 50 seconds in DaVinci Resolve, and 10 minutes, 33 seconds in uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. And compare that to uh, Ryzen 5 3600, is 6 minutes, 59 seconds in Resolve, and 6 minutes, 29 seconds in Final, and sorry, in Premiere Pro. So. A little bit off, but not, not, not a huge, huge difference between those. All right, now we go, so let's go to the most complicated project that I used, and that's the video that I did on Dante here on the channel. And this is really where we started to see some huge deltas between the different machines. Um, so M1 took, four, well, in Premiere Pro, it took two hours, 59 minutes, four seconds to render that video. That video is 35 minutes. Uh, so just to give you a point of comparison. In DaVinci Resolve, it did it in 23 minutes, 27 seconds, and then in Final Cut, it did it in 30 minutes and 15 seconds. I, again, I should not make it very clear that Resolve and Final Cut had a huge advantage here, and that they didn't have to render the After Effects lower thirds, because those were already pre-done. And so Adobe Premiere is actually doing considerably more work than the others. Um, and also, I should also mention that the Final Cut Pro version of these files did not include the scaling, animation, uh, or any of those other effects on any of the video clips, and it also did not include the color LUT that was uh, included in both of the others. So Final Cut Pro really had a very simple job to do on this one, because it was essentially just cutting between shots. It wasn't having to do any of the processing that the other editors had to do. So yeah, again, Adobe Premiere was really at a disadvantage here because it was having to do that the After Effects rendering on quite a few lower thirds that were part of that video. Compare the Mac Mini performance there with that of the Ryzen 5 3600, uh, the Mac Mini M1 27, 23 minutes 27 seconds in Resolve, the Ryzen 5 3600 11 minutes 45 seconds and then in uh, Premiere Pro whereas the Mac Mini took th basically three hours, the Ryzen 5 did it in 21 minutes and 18 seconds. So notice that those numbers are actually lower than the total length of the video. The video is 35 minutes, rendering times 11 minutes 45 and, and 21 
so those machine that machine is capable of rendering even complicated projects at faster than real time. Anyway, um, so HEVC, I'm just very quickly say the same project rendering in HEVC instead of H.264, and then we have the same thing rendering in ProRes. So, in basically in terms of video rendering performance, the M1 does just fine when you have a very simple timeline where you're not doing any fancy transitions, you're not doing any color manipulation, you're not applying any kind of LUTs, you're not really doing anything in terms of scaling your video, you're not zooming in, zooming out, moving things around. It's able to keep up fairly well. Uh, also, you can, in that situation, it, do, it does well with just a single video clip. So if you start layering, that's where the performance really starts to fall apart on this machine unfortunately. So you put more than a handful of video clips on your timeline layered on top of one another and the performance on this machine actually just tanks. But as soon as long as you're just doing fairly simple edits, uh, especially if you're going fr from the same format in to the same format out, the M1 actually does a pretty good job of keeping up. It's just those more complicated projects. Um, if you look at the videos I have on my YouTube channel, that's what I would consider kind of a standard uh, video project. And in that case, this machine kind of really kind of struggles, if I'm being be, being quite frank. So yeah, the performance on this on the M1 processor really doesn't keep up uh, when you're dealing with projects that are that complicated. So if if those are the pro sort of projects you work on, you probably want to skip this generation and wait for a new a newer version of it, whatever that might be, an M1X or M2, whatever Apple decides to call it. But for right now, if you're editing. Anything that's more complicated than simple cuts and dissolves with anything more than a single layer, yeah, it, it, this machine probably is not going to be ideal for you. It's not going to give you the performance that you may, maybe may want. That said, though, what I found, though, is that this, this generally does outperform even a recent MacBook Pro higher-end model. So, and the total rendering time on this machine was same in the same ballpark generally as the MacBook Pro from 2019 that I tested. Uh, it would would have done much better had it not been for that da, da Vinci, uh, sorry, not for that Dante video that I included in the testing. That's really where the performance on this machine fell apart quite a bit, and that's one where the MacBook Pro actually did a lot better. It was able to render that video twice as fast as the M1. Had it not been for that video, the M1 would have been faster than that 2019 MacBook Pro in every. It, it was faster than the MacBook Pro in every other video that I rendered. So, yeah, for most projects, this probably will outrun. MacBook Pro is even uh, up, up until the current the current model, uh, uh, non-M1 models as well. So, but if you're an Adobe Premiere user, the bottom line here is that you probably shouldn't be on a Mac at all because the performance delta between PCs and Macs and Adobe Premiere is pretty wide. And it, and on the testing that I was doing, it was at least two to one. And if we go back and look. M1, 13 hours, 1 minute, 54 seconds, whereas that Adobe Ryzen 5 machine that I wanted to call out, 2 hours, 57 minutes, and 22 seconds. So you're talking about a difference of more than four times. In the total rendering time between those two machines, the, the, the PC was actually four times faster uh, at rendering the videos as a whole, all the different videos that I included. So, so yeah, so if you're in Adobe, probably should be on PC. If you're a Final Cut user or a Resolve user and you're doing fairly simple editing, this machine is probably fine for you. Anything very sophisticated, though, and the performance does start to fall apart. So, yeah, probably not an ideal machine as a video editor. Now, before I go with this video, I also want to talk a little bit about compatibility with hardware, um, because very often when we're doing with video editing, we have to interface with other hardware. and uh, the Blackmagic hardware that I tested all seemed to work just fine. So I hooked it into several different mod models of Ultra Studio uh, converters, and those all worked fine. That includes the monitor and recorder versions, and then an original four Ultra Studio 4K from several years ago. So even though it's a Thunderbolt 2 device, I used a simple converter, and that machine, or that device actually worked just fine. Uh, installing the drivers for the, all of those was kind of a pain. Uh, Apple makes it very difficult with all the security protocols they have in place. It requires several reboots and it requires you to boot into a special mode of your computer to authorize the kernel extension that those drivers actually use. So if you're going to do that, make sure you pay very close attention to the instructions that come with, with, it, with the drivers uh, for that. So, In terms of live 
uh, performance, so live rendering, live encoding of, of streaming video. I ran OBS on this machine and it did fine with 1080 video, but performance really fell apart with 4K. It was not able to keep up. With a 1080, 1080p uh, 2997, it was consuming 44% of the CPU. And the main reason for that is OBS has not been updated to be able to do to use the m one GPU in order to video encoding. So even the upcoming ver version 27 that's uh, in beta right now does not include that. So it's going to be a while yet before we actually see native rendering, na native encoding on the M1 with, with within OBS. So for right now, you're better off. If you're going to be on the Mac, you're better off to use one of the older Intel-based Macs if you're, if you're in OBS. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it, I'm sure that will get fixed at some point, but uh, for right now, uh, M1 is just not up to, up to par. I also wanted to talk a little bit about general performance on the machine, um, doing just everyday things. For the most part, the machine is actually quite snappy. So, yeah, so as I, as I launch some apps in here, go out and cross the calendar, it comes right up, you know. Uh, the mail app comes right up. So all of the Apple native apps launch very, very, very quickly. So you're not waiting around for any of that. You can tell that some of Apple's apps really haven't been optimized just yet. So, for example, if I was to launch Keynote here, you know, it takes a few seconds. Uh, not certainly up to the standard of the apps that are built right into Mac OS. Uh, but per and performance isn't bad. Um, when you start to get into apps from other manufacturers, you know, say for example a Microsoft app or something like that, performance really does kind of uh, degrade consider, uh, compared to the native apps that are included with Mac OS. I'm sure that will change with time, but for right now they definitely feel slower on the M1 than they did on the older Intel machines. Again, we just need to give them some time in order to really learn how to properly optimize the performance of the M1 processor. Apple has had years to do this, other companies have not, and so we're going to see that that improve, that situation improve with time. Anyway, bottom line is for people doing video production work, um, you probably want to hold off on the M1 for right now. It's certainly capable of some light, light use workloads, uh, but if you're doing anything more sophisticated, you're going to be better off with pretty much anything else. And if you're an Adobe user in particular, so even though I was running the M1 versions of the Adobe apps, the performance just was not there. Uh, it, it paled in comparison to other options, and it really paled in comparison to running a PC with, a, with an NVIDIA GPU. Pro yeah, Adobe, Adobe users probably should hold off and just go ahead and use Adobe Suite on a PC run with an N NVIDIA GPU. The performance there is so, so much better. Uh, but anyway, I realize that there's going to be a lot of people who just like Mac OS and they're going to try and want to try and avoid PCs and that's fine you know but just understand that if you're running Adobe products you're really missing out on a lot of performance that's available on the PC which is not available on the Macs primarily because of Apple's ongoing disputes with Nvidia over the years that's not going to change they're going to be doing their own GPUs from now on so hopefully in the pipeline they've got something that's running a little bit faster it's going to be a little bit more optimized for performance than what they're offering us right now the GPU in this machine to me feels like it's probably about the performance of an Nvidia GTX 1050 from four years ago on the PC side so decent for 1080 not great for much else you know it's just not quite fast enough it's not really up to par in terms of processing anything more than 1080p video in real time. So just keep that in mind. Don't ask the machine to do too much and you'll be pretty happy with it. But if you're if you're someone who's running 4K and running it, especially if you're running in the Adobe Suite, you probably are going to find better options somewhere else. So so there it is. If you have questions about this, please leave those in the comment section of the video down below. Or you can join us over on Discord. We've got a Discord server set up. You can get there at djp.li slash Discord. I will have a channel set up just for discussions about the M1 processor. I will ask that everybody please be courteous with one another in, in the comments and on Discord. We're adults. We can treat one, one another with respect, and anybody who chooses not to do that will be asked to leave and or banned from, from either one of those venues. Please, if you want to see more details about this, I'm going to go into and actually show some of the videos that I included on this and talk about how those videos were put together, the different layers, the different attributes, the different uh, components that are part of each one of those things, so you can understand a little bit better what that sort of things do work well on the M1 versus one, which ones are kind of lacking at this point. So uh, there's a card popping up on your screen right now for that other video. So please join me over there and we'll take the discussion into more detail and you'll have a better idea what's really going on. So thanks everyone for watching and have a great day.